In the Mojave Desert of the Western United States, a team of American and Canadian engineers aims to break the land speed record. Perfect, perfect. The goal, 1,300 kilometers an hour. That's one kilometer in less than three seconds. To get here took 70 years of new world records. 1937, 500 kilometers per hour. 1963, 650 kilometers per hour. 1970, 1,000 kilometers per hour. Then, in October of 1997, a British team reaches a milestone of hyperspeed. Their car, the Thrust SSC, reaches 1,228 kilometers an hour, breaking the sound barrier. The world's first supersonic car. This team wants to drive the second. The means? A rocket on wheels called the North American Eagle. The team's chances? Who knows? Just ask the Eagle's driver and the team's driving force. Ed Shadel is a 65-year-old engineer and hyperspeed fanatic. The things that scare you when you get faster and faster is, it, of course, things happen faster. The road to world records is paved with twisted metal. He lost his shoot. He lost his shoot. And heartache. It's like the American Wild West. All right, this is the last frontier of automobile racing. Everybody thinks that these guys are going to fall on their butts. None of them are going to be able to achieve what they want. But they've been at this for six or seven years. It's not easy. No further. I know of a lot of teams have just gone out there real fast and and, uh, and they've ended in disaster. We want to keep everybody forward of the car. Yes, we have. Bill Eckberg is a former United States Air Force mechanic and the Eagles crew chief. The one thing we don't want to do is uh, is deviate from safety. We take one step at a time until we pass that step, and then we move on. Bill isn't the only member of the team that came from the Air Force. The Eagle started as the F-104 Starfighter, built at the height of the Cold War to outfly anything the Soviets had. It flew twice the speed of sound, so fast it was called the missile with a man in it. Lose two wings and add five wheels, and you have a rocket car. Heavier than a dump truck. More horsepower than a locomotive. That's just the vehicle. And then you've got all the little things that take place that, to run the car. Dozens of sensors to record pressure, loads, and acceleration. In the back 600 measurements per second and over 40,000 horsepower. Today's run will last about 60 seconds and suck 100 gallons of gas. We get to oh, around about 105 feet per gallon. Doesn't get good mileage, but it'll get you there in a hurry. Today, every record-setting run on land faces challenges, beginning where the rubber meets the road. The best rubber tires have a top speed around 700 kilometers an hour. Then, centrifugal force attacks the bond between rubber and cords. The solution? Special titanium alloy wheels. The worst threat? Sonic shock. Supersonic speed generates a shock wave that engineers feared would flip the eagle. Instead, the lake bed will absorb the shock wave and dissipate its energy, even at the speed of sound. At least, that's the theory. They know they've got enough power. Did you get a little something? So today is all about what happens after you go fast. Hitting the brakes. There, maybe there's some air in the other side. Push down the brake on this side. Beautiful, you see? With the extreme friction of hyperspeed, conventional metal-on-metal -metal brakes could lock the wheels and flip the car. So they've ignored convention. The Eagle is the first vehicle in history to use magnetic brakes. Two large metal plates rest on the wheel assembly, one on the wheel, the other on the axle. 
They're lined with 27 magnets. To apply the brakes, the axle plate moves toward the wheel, but never makes contact. Electromagnetism bleeds off energy and slows the wheel down without ever touching. You have a problem and you have to overcome it. So all of a sudden you've found a new type of technology that can solve a problem. The car goes so fast, even these brakes need help. The Eagle uses parachutes as a secondary system. The other system we're testing here is the high-speed parachutes. There is no parachutes out here that really are, are made to deploy at 800 miles an hour. This is the next obstacle of hyperspeed on land. Even if you have the brakes, you need the space. There is a limit that land speed has in terms of uh, what can be achieved on the ground because you have to think about the fact that we have to accelerate, go through the clock mile, and decelerate within a reasonable amount of real estate. At 1,300 kilometers an hour, the Eagle needs a full 10 kilometers to stop. Few places on Earth are long enough, straight enough, and flat enough for this sort of run. The Black Rock Desert of Nevada in the western United States is one. Only the curvature of the Earth itself disturbs the surface. Today, the North American Eagle crew is taking their next step toward the land speed record. Team member John Higley inspects a swath 50 meters wide for trash, which could be deadly. Well, it looks like we've got to need a check here. Grit is actually good for the Eagle's engine. The sand scours the blades clean. But anything larger than sand could rupture a tire or shatter a windshield. Foreign object damage. It's a life-threatening environment that we're in. And if you don't do it right, it'll kill you. A soda can sucked into the intake could destroy the car, not to mention the driver. This is not what we want. A large metal piece off of a motorcycle or something. That would do serious damage. All clear. Let's go racing. Hey. Oh. Back on the right. Success and setback. The new brakes worked, the front wheel didn't. It goes left easily, but for some reason it won't turn right. The problem is a hydraulics leak. It's inevitable. You find a system that isn't working, you fix it. Find another one, you fix it. It's a continuous process until you get the vehicle where you want it to be. It's running true now. The learning new things all come part and parcel with the development of this entire project. Let's go run the car. Yeah. Even if you get the vehicle where you want it, unforeseen obstacles beyond your control can emerge. You can just see it coming towards you. If you're not prepared, uh, your uh, canopies, your equipment, your tools could all be blown away in a matter of seconds because the wind picks up. Just like in the movie, The Mummy, where you have this huge rolling sandstorm coming down. If the conditions don't settle down, we'll just fold it up. In this new era of speed, it's about more than propulsion, materials, and engineering. Even the environment must be perfect. Look at what they went through. Could they catch a break? I mean, we're in the middle of the desert, and what happens? It rains. You have money problems, you have technology problems, and you have Mother Nature. And all three of them can bite you. That's the problem with hyperspeed on land. Power is unlimited, but engineering isn't. And the margin for error grows ever thinner. The easiest part of land speed racing is when Enshadel gets into that thing and drives for the record. That will be the easiest thing he does. 